my dear students welcome back to our channel in this video i will be explaining the bsc third semester subject mathematics real analysis as prescribed by usmania university and other universities of telangana we will go through the important questions and answers one by one let's begin with a quick revision unit 1 first important short question is show that lean n 1 n 2 is equal to 0 we need to show that lean n 1 n 2 is equal to 0 step 1 understand what the limit means when we write it means as n becomes very very large approaches infinity the value of 1 n 2 becomes closer and closer to 0 so we need to prove that for very large n 1 n 2 is as small as we want step 2 recall the formal definition of limit of a sequence a sequence a underscore n converges to leaf for any small number 0 we can find a natural number n as you see that here l is equal to 0 we want step 3 solve the inequality take reciprocal on both sides since both are positive inequality flips take square root this means if n is bigger than 1 the sequence term 1 n 2 will be smaller than any small number step 4 conclusion for any small number 0 we can choose n is equal to 1 then for all n n this proves that step 5 easy way to remember think 1 divided by a huge number squared super tiny 0 example so as n 1 n to 0 next important short question is to define bounded sequence and give an example definition of bounded sequence a sequence a underscore n is called bounded if its terms do not go to infinity and stay within a fixed range formally n is bounded if there exists a number m0 such that a underscore n less than or equal to m for all n here means a fixed positive number that acts like a ceiling and floor for the sequence in simple words no matter how far you go in the sequence the terms never exceed a certain limit example sequence n is equal to maximum value is equal to 1 minimum value is equal to minus 1 so n less than or equal to 1 bounded sequence n is equal to n 1 2 3 4 terms keep increasing not bounded easy way to remember bounded is equal to trapped inside a box terms can move around but they cannot escape beyond a fixed number this is a fundamental concept in sequences especially when studying cauchy sequences convergence and lean sub inf next important short question is 3 determine the nature of the series we are asked to determine the nature of the series step 1 understand the series the general term of the series is n is equal to 2n n3 plus 6 we need to check if the series converges adds up to a finite number or diverges grows without limit step 2 compare dominant terms for large n for very large n the plus 6 inches the denominator becomes negligible so approximately this is called a synthetic comparison step 3 use the comparison test we know the series 1 n to converges p series with p is equal to 2 1 now compare a underscore n with 2 n 2 since converges by comparison test our series also converges step 4 conclusion the series is convergent step 5 easy way to remember look at highest powers of nin numerator and denominator approximate for large nto simplify compare with a known p series apply comparison test convergence 
Tip. Anything like series usually converges. Next important short question is. 4 if n is equal to sin n pi 3 find lean sup n and lean inf n. We are asked to find the lean sup and lean inf of the sequence. n is equal to sin n pi 3. Step 1. Understand the sequence. The sequence is. Let's calculate the first few terms. Observation. The sequence repeats every six terms. Step 2. Identify the maximum and minimum values. Maximum value of the sequence is equal to 3, 2. Minimum value of the sequence is equal to 3, 2. Step 3. Use definitions of lean sup and lean inf. Lean sup is equal to largest subsequential limit is equal to the largest number that subsequences approach. From the pattern, the sequence keeps reaching 3, 2. So, lean sup underscore n is equal to 3, 2. Lean INF is equal to smallest subsequential limit is equal to the smallest number that subsequences approach. From the pattern, the sequence keeps reaching 3, 2. So, Lean INF underscore N is equal to dash 3, 2. Step 4. Conclusion Step 5. Easy way to remember. Write the first six terms. Notice the repeating pattern, periodicity. Lean sup is equal to largest number in the pattern. Lean INF is equal to smallest number in the pattern. Tip for sequences like sin, n pi 3. Always check periodicity first, it makes finding lean sup and lean INF easy. Next important short question is. 5. Prove that every Cauchy sequence is bounded. Statement. Every Cauchy sequence is bounded. Step 1. Recall the definition of Cauchy sequence. A sequence, n, is Cauchy if. For every zero, there exists a natural number n such that. Step 2. Prove boundedness. Let is equal to 1. Then there exists n such that. Fix m is equal to n plus 1. Then for all n n. The first n terms finite. So they have a maximum absolute value m1. Let m is equal to. Then all terms satisfy n less than or equal to n. Thus, n is bounded. Step 3. Example to remember. Sequence, n is equal to 1 n Cauchy. Yes. Bounded. Yes. All terms 0 and less than or equal to 1. Small numbers never escape the box bounded. Easy way to remember. Cauchy is equal to terms get closer cannot fly away bounded. Always pick is equal to 1 to find a bound. Next unit 1. Long questions. First important long question is. If Sn converges to S and Tn converges to T then show that Sn plus Tn converges to S plus T. We are asked to prove. If Sn, Sand, Tn, T, then Sn plus Tn, S plus T. Step 1. Recall what convergence means. A sequence, Xn, converges to Xif. For every small zero, there exists a number n such that. Here. Step 2. Consider the sum sequence. Let we need to show. Check the difference. Step 3. Use the triangle inequality. Step 4. Apply convergence of Sn and Tn. Let n is equal to max n1 n2. Then for n n. Step 5. Conclusion. This proves that the sum of two convergent sequences is also convergent. Step 6. Easy way to remember. Add sequences add limits. Use triangle inequality to split differences. Think each sequence gets closer to its limit, so their sum also gets closer to sum of limits. Next important long question is. 
to prove that a sequence is a convergent sequence if and only if it is Cauchy sequence. We are asked to prove a sequence is convergent if and only if it is a Cauchy sequence. Step 1. Recall the definitions. Convergent sequence. A sequence and converges to leaf. Cauchy sequence. A sequence and is Cauchy if. Idea in a Cauchy sequence, the terms get closer to each other, while in a convergent sequence, the terms get closer to a fixed limit. Step 2. Convergent Cauchy. Suppose an L. Then. Now, for any n, m, n. So, every convergent sequence is Cauchy. Step 3. Cauchy Convergent. In real numbers, every Cauchy sequence cannot escape infinity, it is bounded. By the completeness property of real numbers, a bounded Cauchy sequence always converges to some limit L. So, every Cauchy sequence in R is convergent. Step 4. Conclusion A sequence is convergent, it is Cauchy, in R. Dot. Step 5. Easy way to remember. Convergent Cauchy terms get closer to the limit, they also get closer to each other. Cauchy convergent terms get closer to each other, bounded converge to some limit. Tip. Think of a Cauchy sequence as terms huddle together, must settle at some number. Next important long question is 3 if f is uniformly continuous on a set S and Sn is a Cauchy sequence in S then show that f Sn is Cauchy sequence. We are asked to prove if f is uniformly continuous on a set sand Sn is a Cauchy sequence in S then f Sn is also a Cauchy sequence. Step 1. Recall the definitions. Uniform continuity. A function is uniformly continuous on SIF. Notice, depends only on, not on the points X, Y. Cauchy sequence. A sequence, SN, is Cauchy if. Step 2. Idea of the proof. We want to show that, F, SN, is Cauchy, i.e. We will use uniform continuity and the Cauchy property of, SN. Step 3. Apply uniform continuity. Let 0 be given. Since f is uniformly continuous, there exists delta 0 such that. Now, Sn is Cauchy, so there exists n such that for all n, m, n. Step 4. Combine both properties. For all n, m, n. F, Sn, F, Sn. This exactly matches the definition of a Cauchy sequence. Step 5. Conclusion F. S. N. is a Cauchy sequence. Step 6. Easy way to remember. Cauchy sequence points close together. Uniform continuity close points in domain close points in range. Combine Cauchy sequence in domain Cauchy sequence in range. Tip. Think of it as squeezing the sequence through a uniformly continuous function. The closeness is preserved. Next important long question is. 4. Prove that every sequence has a monotonic subsequence. We are asked to prove. Every sequence, Sn, has a monotonic subsequence. Step 1. Recall the definitions. Monotonic sequence, a sequence is monotonic if it is either increasing, decreasing. Subsequence, a subsequence is obtained by picking some terms of the original sequence in order. Example, from 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, a subsequence can be 1, 2, 3. Step 2, idea of the proof, using peaks. Look at the sequence, SN. Some terms may be peaks larger than all following terms. Two cases. Case 1. Infinite number of peaks. Pick all peaks. They form a decreasing subsequence because each peak is larger than the terms after it. Case 2. Only finitely many peaks. Then, after some point, 
there are no more peaks, meaning every term has a larger term after it. Pick one term, then pick a later larger term, then a later larger term. This forms an increasing subsequence. Step 3. Conclusion In both cases, we can always find a monotonic subsequence, either increasing or decreasing. Hence, every sequence has a monotonic subsequence. Step 4. Easy way to remember. Think of peaks. Many peaks pick them decreasing subsequence. Few peaks always a bigger term later increasing subsequence. No sequence can escape both cases monotonic subsequence always exists. Tip, draw a sequence on a graph and mark peaks makes it super easy to visualize and remember. Next important long question is. 5 state and prove ratio test. Let's explain the ratio test step by step in a simple and easy way. Step 1. Statement of the ratio test. Consider a series and with positive terms. Let L is equal to lean N, A, N plus 1 and Then If L1 the series converges. If L1 the series diverges. If L is equal to 1 the test is inconclusive. Simple way to remember. Ratio 1 safe convergent. Ratio 1 blows up divergent. Step 2 proof convergent case L1. Suppose. Choose a number such that L are 1. Then, for large n n, we have. Applying repeatedly. So, for k greater than or equal to 1. Consider the tail of the series. Since an R converges, the original series converges. Step 3. Divergent case L1. If A underscore N plus 1 and 1 for large N, then A N plus 1 and. So N does not tend to 0, which is necessary for convergence. Hence, the series diverges. Step 4. Easy way to remember. Compute L is equal to lean A n plus 1 and compare l with 1 l1 convergent l1 divergent l is equal to 1 test fails tip works best for series with factorials powers or exponential terms